Hello friends, I am Justin P. Matthew from Computer Science and Engineering Department. Today I would like to explain you about a topic called SHA3, uh, which is also known as KCAC algorithm and it's part of my assignment and cryptography subject. So first of all, uh, when you listen to the word SHA3, we'll have a uh, question that what's SHA or what is known as SHA. So uh, for your for your understanding, let me first explain you what is SHA. SHA that means Secured Hash Algorithm is a family of functions that are used in almost of all the online transactions in order to make them safer and reliable. So SHA is a Secured Hash Algorithm. It has a family of functions that are used in almost all of the online transactions to make it safer and secure. But the problem in SHJ is SJ uses data as input and there's a huge amount or a growing amount of data which in turn uh, while we do it takes a long calculation time that's a problem in SHJ so we would perform this SHJ3 algorithm using hardware thus calculating it faster cheaper and leaving the CPU available for other operations. So let's look into what is SHA3. So SHA3 is the latest member of the secure hash algorithm family of standards released by NIST on August 5, 2015. In 2005, Wang and other members introduced serious concerns about the security of SHA1. NIST opened a public competition to develop a cryptographic hash algorithm SHA3 and uh, KCAC was the team which consists of Bertoni, Diamond, Peters, Jill Swan and they were announced as the SHA3 winner on October 2, 2012. So uh, since uh, they uh, raised serious concern about the security of SHA1 they felt that they need a new algorithm that is where their competition was held uh, by NIST to develop a new cryptographic hash algorithm which is known as SHA3 and this team KCAC it won that prize and these are the four members who were part of that KCAC team Jiro Bertani, Joan Diamond, Michael Peters, Jill Van Asch. So looking about the history of this uh, SHA3 of KCAC algorithm, KCAC algorithm is based on earlier hash function designs, Panama and Radio Gator. In 2006, which I already told you, NIST started to organize the NIST hash function competition to create a new hash standard, that is SHA3. Now, SHA3 is not meant to replace SHA2 as of no significant attack on SHA, SHA2 has been demonstrated. Because of the successful attacks on MD5, SHA0, SHA1, NIST perceived a need for an alternative, dissimilar cryptographic hash, which became SHA3. Now, during the competition, entrants were permitted to tweak their algorithm to address the issues that were discovered. Changes that have been made to KCAC are the number of rounds was increased from 12 plus L to 12 plus 2 L to be more cons conservative about security. The message padding was changed from a more complex scheme to the simple 10 into 1 pattern described below and the rate R was increased to the security limit rather than rounding down the nearest power of 2. So, as I already told you, BIP3 came after there was a competition uh, since the previous uh, uh, like SHAs or all these algorithms had there had been successful attacks on MD5, SHA0 and SHA1. So uh, this NIST, they perceived and they thought there's a need for an alternative dissimilar cryptographic hash and that's where this team called KCAT1 and SHA3 was introduced. So now let's talk about the design of SHA3. SHA3 uses the sponge construction in which data is absorbed into the sponge. Then the result is squeezed out. Now uh, when you 
re, uh, listen to the word or uh, when you see the word sponge construction you may be having the doubt that what is a sponge construction so in cryptography a sponge function or sponge construction is any of a class of algorithm with finite internal state that take an input bit stream of any length and produce an output bit stream of any desired length. Sponge functions have both theoretical and practical use. Okay, so that's what sponge function or sponge construction is. Uh, it may be of any class of algorithms with finite internal state and uh, it takes an input bit stream of any length as input and produces an output bit stream of any desired length so uh, as we told in which data is absorbed so in the absorbing phase message blocks are exhorted into a subset of the state which is then transformed as a whole using a permutation function f and then uh, we said then the result is squeezed so in the squeeze phase output blocks are read from the same subset of the state alternated with the straight transformation function f the size of the part of the state that is written and read is called the rate denoted as r and the size of the part that is untouched by input or output is called the capacity which is denoted as c the capacity determines the security of the scheme the maximum security level is half the capacity suppose there is an uh, input string given as n a padding function pad a permutation function f that operates on bit blocks of width b a rate r and an output length t we have capacity c that is equal to b minus r and the sponge construction z is equal to sponge of f comma pad comma r uh, n comma d yielding a bit string z of length d so let's talk about sponge construction so sponge which has uh, three parameters f pad and r so f is fixed length permutation which operates on b bits pad which is the padding rule which is denoted by m or pad of b m where m is the sign of message r which stands for bit rate capacity equals to b minus r and c minus b now when you look into this diagram this is the sponge construction for hash functions now pi or we can say p0 p1 p2 p3 are the uh, inputs and this z0 z1 and z2 are the hashed output and this unused capacity c should be twice the desired resistance to collision or pre-image attacks so now you can see in the input phase it's absorbing and in the output phase it's squeezing now let's look into the working of this sponge construction so it starts with the step pad the input n using the pad function yielding a padded bit string p with a length divisible by r such that n is equal to len of p by r is integer break p into n consecutive r bit pieces p0 till p n minus 1 that is break them into uh, n consecutive r bit pieces that will be uh, used for absorbing then we will initialize the state s to, to a string of b zero bits after that as i told you absorb the input into the state which we already initialized it as state s for each block pi that is p0 p1 p2 and p3 then um, extend pi at the end by a string of c0 bits yielding one of length b exhort that with s apply the block permutation f to the result yielding a new state s initialize z to the empty string z is the output which is used for squeezing initialize z to the empty string okay after that is done while the length of z is less than d okay well uh, it's less than d See, here we can see the output length is d and the sponge construction is z so uh, while the length of z is less than d that is less than the output length append the first r bits of s to z if z is still less than d bits long apply f to s yielding a new state s truncate z to d bits 
after that uh, there were some later developments in two, uh, let's look into that in 2016 the same team that made the sh3 functions and the kcac algorithm introduced faster reduced rounds that is reduced to 12 and 14 rounds from the 24 in sh3 alternatives which can exploit the availability of parallel execution because of using tree hashing kangaroo 12 and marsupilami 14 the reduced number of rounds is justified by the huge cryptanalytic effort focused on KCAT, which is not which did not produce practical attacks on anything close to 12 round KCAT. These higher speed algorithms are not part of SHA3 as they are a later development, but they are just as secure as the SHA3 functions because they use the same KCAT computation and there are no attacks on 12 round KCAT. Cryptographic libraries that support SHA3 are Botan, Bouncy Castle, CryptLib, Crypto++, LibGCrypt, Nettle, OpenSSL, WolfSSL. In conclusion, we can say SHA3 is the next hash function in the future. It can provide a secure scheme which provides the closest thing to a random oracle with a finite state. It's most lower than SHA256. However, it provides a good hardware design architecture to make manufacturers implement it. And one more thing which I have already mentioned in the previous slides, it's like SHA3 is not meant to replace SHA2. Since I have told you uh, there have been attacks in the uh, C because of the successful attacks on MD5, SHA0 and SHA1. That's where uh, this NIST thought of having a new algorithm so thank you for watching my video i hope uh, this video was useful for you please do like share and subscribe my channel